I wanted to play Major League Baseball. I am a failed player. So in a sense, no matter what I ever do in life, I am a failure, because that was my number one dream. I'm Zach Hample, and I've snagged more baseballs in the stands at Major League Stadiums than anyone. Long drive, way back, gone. Judge couldn't catch it, but that guy did. Zach, what you do fascinates me. Most kids stop bringing a glove to a baseball park at around 12. This is almost your singular focus in life right now, is to catch as many baseballs as you can. Oh, there it is. Okay, what is this guy? Is he a fan? Is he an athlete? Like, like, what is he doing out there? He's clearly doing things that other people haven't been able to do. Yeah, Zach Hample, he is either famous or notorious, depending on your point of view. Ooh, look at that background. <laughs> Zach, Jeff, hello. Good afternoon. Hey, great to see you. Great to see you both. Thanks for joining me today. What a great documentary. Thank you for such, uh, it's such a good time. You know, it's, it just felt Americana when I watched this documentary. So congratulations Perfect. to both of you. Thanks. Yeah. Well, that's what we're going for. What's more American than trying to catch a home run ball at a baseball game? That's right. Well, you know, Zach, 10,000 balls over your lifetime of collecting at different major league baseball games. It all had to begin with the first ball. When and where did it all begin? It began really before I even got that ball because I was watching baseball on TV and seeing fans going nuts whenever they caught one. And I wanted to experience that joy. And I went to my first game when I was six, had my glove. No one in my family knows anything about sports. So we didn't know to get there early for batting practice. And this was in the days before GPS. So my dad and I aimed for the first inning, got lost and arrived like in the third inning at Yankee Stadium and went right to the upper deck. No chance of catching a ball, but I was hopeful. And it took me six more years after that before I got my first one. And, and even that was just a simple toss up in warmups, but something clicked inside my brain at that moment. And I just wanted more and more and more. That is incredible. And, you know, Jeff, how do you tell the story of a man who has collected 10,000 baseballs from every major league baseball venue in his lifetime? How did you guys connect? Well, yeah, we, we randomly met a long time ago in 2008 at a game. I had discovered Zach online and uh, read his first book, and I was kind of inspired just like so many kids are now by his YouTube channel. And I said, I, I want to give this a shot. I mean, I've been in many games and, you know, once in a while, I think I'd gotten one toss up ball or something, but I said, I want to show up early. I want to be one of the first people in, I'm going to listen to his rules. And, and it, it's a wild interactive experience if people haven't tried it. Um, I, I don't still do it. I mean, I would, it's, it's fun. If you show up really early and the teams are taking batting practice, balls are flying out left and right. And now it's become such a phenomenon when you go to ballparks, uh, you know, a lot due to Zach for kind of cultivating this hobby and, and putting the word out there. But so many people are, you know, running around with gloves and it, it's what a fun experience to be able to get to, you know, field a ball hit, hit by major league players coming into the seat. So I, I randomly met him at that game. And um, we started talking and I was fascinated by him in person. And that sort of is where the seeds were planted. And uh, it wasn't until for six years later, but I, I did an interview with him for a different project. And I was like, you know, I think there's something about this guy. Maybe there should be a film just about him. And then uh, a little after that, he caught the A-Rod 3000th hit and was all over the place. And I said, I, I think this is definite. There's a there there. So I was going to say, Zach, you know, some of the, the baseballs you have in your collection are, are part of sports history. Can you tell us about a few of them? Sure. Well, you know, it's funny. The two most important baseballs that I've ever gotten are not part of my collection because I gave those baseballs to the players who hit them. One of them was Mike Trout's first career home run in 2011 in Baltimore. Uh, I gave that baseball to him after the game and I caught it in the eighth inning. So I only had it in my possession for like half an hour. I didn't even have time to soak in the moment really. And then four years after that in 2015, I snagged Alex Rodriguez's 3,000th hit. It took a couple of weeks for me to give that ball to him because I had to work out a deal with the Yankees. They donated a ton of money to my favorite children's baseball charity, pitching for baseball and softball. Um, so yeah, eventually I gave that to him. So those two baseballs, if I sent them to auction now, if I had them, I think definitely three, $4 million combined. So it's fun to be- wow part of those big moments. I, I mean, I wish I had that money in my bank account or I wish I still had those baseballs in my possession, but at the time it was the right thing to do. Mike Trout was a 19 year old batting under 200. I just wanted the kid to get his baseball, even though I knew the potential decades down the line, if he ended up in the hall of fame and with a rod, there was this charity 
a component that I just couldn't say no to. So well, you made a lot of kids happy. You made a lot of kids happy. So you made a big, I try. Yeah. I I also give away, you know, there's this misconception that I'm bulldozing kids out there and stealing balls, but it's really just the opposite. That's true. And, And I give away most of the baseballs that I catch now I've handed out thousands of baseballs at games, sent some to the charity. So I try not to be a, a, a total jerk in the process of running around and having my fun. Oh, it, it, go ahead, Jeff. You know, just real quick, you know, Zach says in the film too about some of those big ones that even though he gave back, he still, you know, he's a part of their story and their history, regardless of who actually possesses the ball. But he was the one who was actually there and, you know, kind of interfaced with them for that moment. And, uh, you know, the A-Rod one he held onto for a couple of weeks. And I, in the film, interview him while he has the ball before he made the decision to give it back to the Yankees, which is kind of an interesting period in time when everybody is crucifying him in the, in the media. And oh, uh, behind the scenes, he's working out a really nice deal to, to, to give money to a great charity. Well, I think this documentary sets a lot of the record straight. So that's a, it's, it's a good, it's, it's a good thing too. And, and, you know, Zach, uh, in, and also Jeff, this is for you too. Any red tape with major league baseball and making this documentary? <laughs> well, <laughs> I've, done a, I've done a lot of work with them over the years. Um, and you know, they've, yeah, they, they've been, um, they're, they're not, there's certain issues that, that arise and certain things you have to figure out how to navigate as far as getting in there. But I think at the end of the day, uh, the film is a, a love letter to their brand and to going to to baseball games and to, you know, fandom and being at the ballpark and, and this sort of fun thing. And, and I think there's enough positivity. And I hope that they recognize that that Zach has been such a kind of de facto ambassador to, to the sport and to Major League Baseball, that even though some people don't love him and, you know, it, it's going to be people are going to be divisive and and, you know, contrarian no matter what. And, and obviously, when he does something that people a lot of people don't get, you're going to get people who just, you know, are, are, are completely rude and mean and stuff online. But I think in general, most people who spend any time with him and hopefully who watch the film will realize that. I mean, listen, it's, it's the audience is to take away, but I, I, I took away getting, getting really to getting to know him. And I hope other people will too, that I think he's really doing this for the right reasons. I mean, this started and I think he would still be doing it whether or not there were cameras following him or there was any, any way to kind of monetize the, uh, what he does. I, I think this really comes from a place of passion. And uh, I think, I think he would be doing it regardless. <laughs> Absolutely. And, you know, Zach, have you ever given the thought where are all these baseballs going to end up eventually? Have you made plans about your collection, you know, at the end of your life? I mean, what are you going to, because, you know, you always watch uh, television shows, you know, or like uh, American Pickers where they're like, what do we do with all this stuff? Our parents collected all this stuff. I mean, what are you going to do with 10,000 plus baseballs one day? Well, you know, I, I own far fewer than 10,000 because of all the ones I've given away, but I still do own a lot and stored space is an issue, especially living in New York City. But let me say this, my dad way back in the day was a ball boy for a minor league team that incidentally had Warren Spahn on it, the future Hall of Famer. And they gave my dad all their extra baseballs that they didn't want. And when my dad told me this, you know, when I was growing up, I was like, well, where are these baseballs? Let's go play with them. He's like, well, I didn't save them. I didn't know that I was going to have a baseball obsessed kid someday. (laughs) And so I vow to my future potential children that I will save baseballs for them. And then they can decide what will happen. And if I don't have kids, well, I'll figure something else out. But then you will them to me, right? (laughs) Do I get them? I mean, you deserve it, but we'll we'll discuss. I'm not putting anything in writing. Just quite. I actually don't know if I would want to inherit thousands of baseballs. That sounds like, like it might be a burden. That's a big truck. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. It's a big truck. Well, guys, congratulations on a great documentary. It was a pleasure to meet both of you. I wish you the best of luck. And you know, Zach, get ready. Oakland A's are serious about coming to Las Vegas. So we, we'll probably be seeing you in Las Vegas a lot. I mean, I'm always happy to go check out new stadiums. I mean, to 61 different major league stadiums. So, you know, I'd feel bad for Oakland if they lose their team. But if I get to go see baseball somewhere else, I'm all for it. Well, Vegas welcomes them with open arms, I'll tell you that. So thank you, gentlemen. Good luck with the documentary, and let's talk again soon. Thank you. Thanks so much.